All righty. Well, morning, everybody. Um, all right. I should say, I should say good evening. I mean, it's 11.30 p.m. here, so it's, it has yet to be uh, Sunday morning, so. I guess uh, good morning would probably sound better than good night, but to each his own, I guess. Um, but anyway, I was uh, browsing the uh, Final Fantasy XIV forums here, and yeah, I'm still kind of in the middle of setting up, so. And um, this topic here came up. It's... And this was most certainly something that is going to be a lot easier for me to just say than to type down. So, but before I continue on, um, this picture I have above me. And um, yeah, there's going to be a big blank space here in the upper right corner. This is kind of a kind of a wonky setup. But reason being is I have a hard time uh, trying to make. I can't really make this work otherwise because I'm. It's to where I want to play music now while I do these. Um, especially with the kind of music I'm playing now, this, this can actually, this has actually gone, um, oh, what's the word I'm, for? what's the word I'm looking for? Um, but I'm at, this, this music here is actually able to bypass YouTube's, um, copyright flagging system. Um, the, it's, um, uh, basically it's dungeon synth and, uh, black ambient music and why don't we, the name of the band is Depressive Silence. Um, this is our second album. It came out in 1996. But like I said, um, this is just something I started doing recently. Instead of like doing these commentary videos in like total silence. You know, I'm not, I, just, I like to have some music in the background. So. But, uh, I am going to need to sound check this a little bit to make sure it's not too loud. Because I don't want it to drown myself out. And also, throughout this commentary video, I'm going to have me a V8 energy drink, uh, pomegranate blueberry flavored. And as well, I'm going to have some peanut butter M&Ms as well. So. Okay, and I can tell already I'm already going to have to turn that down a bit. Double check. Um, slightly on the low. Yeah, slightly on the loud side. Let me turn it down a little more. All right, that should be about right. Okay, but anyway, um, the name of the thread biggest pet peeves when it comes to dungeon runs I have done up I have done threads like this before um, it just I'm pretty and I'm pretty sure throughout this thread there's probably gonna be a uh, comment such as this topic has been covered numerous times could you just necro one of the other ones or something like that which I'm not a fan of necroing either now that I think about it so yeah I'd prefer to prefer a, prefer a new topic to come up so, but anyway, um, but I'll go ahead and, um, like I usually do when I do these, I'll go ahead and give my two cents, and then, um, I'll go ahead and do commentary on other people's posts, and as this is already about four pages long, um, I think uh, I'll probably go as far as around the first page, and then I'll probably just, I'll kill the vid right then and there, because, uh, after that, it pretty much becomes an echo chamber. Just everybody's saying the same thing as everybody else. So, and, and a little bit more. Okay, I'll stay close enough on that. But anyway, um, probably my big, my big pet peeve, uh, depending on, it actually depends on the role I'm in. If I'm a, if my role is tank, it is something that I have absolutely zero tolerance for is when other players try to pull for me. 
So that it pisses me off to no end when they do that. Um, I consider it to be extremely disrespectful. So, and with something like that, with something like that, if somebody if somebody does it, I end the encounter and I drop group immediately. I used to say something. Um, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But um, the the times I do say something, it no, I'll get usually I'll get some kind of grief like we all gear these dungeons or this content is so nerfed or you know or this content is a joke which is often said by people who grossly out gear the content so so I like I said um I used to try to say something um these days or I should say back when I was playing Final Fantasy 14 I'm I think I've been on hiatus from the game for roughly a year now but back then if as a tank if players were pulling for me, I just end the encounter and leave immediately. I don't even bother. I don't even bother saying anything anymore. So, but um, but yeah. Otherwise, uh, I'm not a, I'm not the kind of, um, as a as a tank. If I'm soloing, if I'm going by myself, then yeah, I pull as much as I think I can handle. Um, but if I'm in a group, especially of randoms, um, and especially if, uh, if, if I inspect a group and if there's at least one player in there who's, like, in really crappy gear, I'm not going to be very likely to pull, pull any more than one at a time. But that's, what I do do, though, is, uh, that very first encounter, um, I'll just, um, I'll base... What I do after that, it depends on how that first encounter goes. If that first, if if that first encounter, if all the monsters drop just like that, then yeah, I'll, I'll go down. I'll you know I'll I'll pull more when I can. But um, even then, I think probably the absolute most I'd pull would be two groups at a time. Uh, but again, it de it also depends on the group I'm with. If I pull two groups. And, if, and if, if both of those groups drop just like that, then maybe I'll pull more. But again, I, I base I base it solely on the group I'm with. So, but I don't, I don't basic. I think it's going to be a recurring theme throughout throughout this entire vid. I don't like doing to other people what's been done to me. So, so again, I don't, I don't. I'm not going to just from the outset. I'm not just going to. <laughs> Take off on the group and just pull as many go boss to boss and then you don't know, got the entire group or anything like that because I don't know who I'm with. The healer might be brand new. The healer might be undergeared. You know, the healer might be the healer might be drunk, disabled, um, you know, stone, um, might be <laughs> in the middle of a stroke or something or you know that kind of thing. I don't know the healer I'm running with, nor do I know the DPSers I'm running with. So no, I'm gonna take I'm gonna do that first pull gonna do that first pull and I'll just I'll make a determination based on that so so I get so probably another recurrent theme probably another thing I'm gonna be saying a lot throughout these uh throughout this vid is uh I don't do this to piss you off but dot 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 so again I don't I don't pull one group at a time just to tick people off I do it there's, there's a reason you know, again, I might be with an undergeared group, or I, if if I'm I'm probably given reason to think that, or given reason to believe that, I can't trust somebody in that group. Like if they're, if you know, if they're undergeared, or if they're, or if, if it's the middle of a firefight and one of my other little pet peeves is got that one jackass player. <laughs> you know, jumping around. If I see that one guy doing that, I'm not pulling any more than one at a time because you got one guy fucking around in the group. So, but, so, but again, that's, um, that's my pet peeve as a tank. But, um, interestingly, I think, um, what I go through as a tank is something that can spill over into the other roles as a healer which is something that I don't really do that often and I'm not, I'm not that great at. Um, basically, being a healer requires me to be in 
almost three different places at once. I have to watch the health meters over here. The health meters, I gotta watch and see who's got deb who has what debuffs. Gotta watch my positioning out here. Like if I'm bat, you know, getting out of bat stuff and whatnot. And then, I gotta watch my mana as well. To make sure I'm not, you know, running too low. So, I gotta be in three places at once as a healer. So, it's something I'm not great at. And oftentimes, you... So, and oftentimes I'll tell the tank, um, you know, warn the tank, haven't healed in a long time. Or, or, not, you know, you know pull big at your risk, or not the best healer, you know, that kind of thing. Warn the tank that, hey, you know, you might want to die, you might want to dial it down a little bit before, you know, before you go too crazy, that kind of thing. But again, the stuff that I have to put up with as a tank can spill over into the healer role too. Um, you know, that's a pet peeve of my tanks that just boom, take off and start pulling big. You know. You know, and it's it's a it's especially bad especially bad in, in a World of Warcraft. I mean, to be fair in Final Fantasy fourteen, there is there is level sync in place. Everybody's level you know, everybody's levels are synced down to the content. So there's a lot, there's some douchebaggery going on in this game, but ain't near as ripe as uh, World of Warcraft. Over there, they don't have level sync. You can literally be, um, even, um, even on, like, like, fresh endgame content where, at least, in, at least in my experience, the level sync is actually too generous, but isn't nearly as bad as, like, the higher, the stuff as it, as the, um, as you go further, further into the expansion, it's like the fuck, the level the level sink is actually going to be higher and higher to a point where there isn't any at all. But basically, as an expansion goes further and further, everybody becomes more and more overgeared for the for the content. And I totally lost my track of thought. So, but it, anyway, um, but again, as a healer, my pet peeve is. Tanks that pull too big, especially, especially, or especially after I warn them first. Hey, haven't done this in a long time. Might want to go a little easy. And they don't, you know, the warning goes unheeded. Tank pulls big. I'm over here. <laughs> you know, I'm having to work overtime here, and you know, I'm, you know, we barely get past the encounter. Tanks and DPS are probably. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we didn't even break a sweat. On to the next group. Meanwhile, I'm... <sighs> so... You know, so again... You know... And, um, I'll save this thought I have in my head for later. But anyway, moving along. As a DPSer... Same problem. And um, again, it's down to... Again, it's down to the tanks. You know, tanks have, you know... This is especially bad in, like, low-level dungeons where the where one big drawback to level sync in this game is, uh... If you're, uh... If your level is synced down to a low enough level, you'll also lose some of your abilities as well. So, in those early, 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 early dungeons, some of us DPSers may not even have access to AoE attacks. We're stuck with single-target attacks. But again... Not all tanks need to be aware of this. They just blithely charge right on forward, pull big, and then they're they're wonder why the hell the encounter is taking so long. You know, and, and if I if I hear something that base if if I hear what basically amounts to DPS more noob, I'm bailing. I'm gone. So. Um, but, but yeah, I, I, again, I mean, this is, but again, it was like I said a few minutes ago, too. My uh, pet peeves as a tank could pretty much spill over into the other two roles as well. So, I mean, you know, healers always complain about tanks that, you know, go off and pull this kind of shit. You know, and next thing you know, tank, you know, tank dies and... You know, the whole group wipes, etc. But even as a DPSer like myself, 
even I would have those same complaints too. I'm not like other DPSers where I'm just totally, you know, totally ignorant of this. You know, I mean, even as a DPSer, I hate this crap. You know, I guess um, the the DPS orthodoxy, for lack of a better word, um, you know, they're 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 supposed to say nothing more than my deeps. You know, and that's about it. So, but anyway, um, I, I think I pretty much said everything I wanted to say. So, now that my two cents are in, I'm going to go ahead and do what I normally do. Just go ahead and do my commentary. Um, probably with just the first page. Well, let me, uh, check the music real quick. Okay, a tiny bit on the loud side, but... You know what? It just hit me. This gear, this music here is almost almost something. Sounds like something I'd hear on a Final Fantasy Tactics. I, it just it just hit me. It's pretty cool. Okay, but anyway, let's move along. Don't run ahead of the tank. Yes. Even if you've done the dungeon plenty of times before. Um, yes, this is... This is one of the problems I had in World of Warcraft as well, which was even worse. The, the game's been out for many years. I mean, I mean, Final Fantasy XIV first came out in, like, 2012, I think? I mean, World of Warcraft's been out since 2004, 2005. So, it's, more, it's already been out for... About seven years before Final Fantasy XIV ever came up. So you could only imagine how jaded those people are. So, but yeah. And again, this is... And this is... This is just as much as... If not more of... A respect issue. Not just an efficiency issue. But a respect issue. So... And it's also... Again, I... It's, it's what I said a few minutes ago. I don't, I don't pull one group at a time just to piss you off. There's probably an underlying reason why I'm doing what I'm doing. Uh, another reason I forgot to mention. Uh, some of these monsters, this was especially bad in World of Warcraft. FF14, to a lesser extent, it's still there, but not as much. Um, a lot of the, a lot of the content in Vanilla WoW. There's a lot of monsters in there that can stun you, disarm you. Um, I think um, I think blindness was in there. Uh, confusion, fear. There was a lot of disabling effects in Vanilla WoW. You don't want to you don't want to sit here and pull big, and then you're spending half your time stunned, monsters beating on you. You can't get aggro on next. You know all those monsters you pulled start attacking everybody else. So. And so again, that might that might be one of the reasons why I'm only one going one group at a time, because of stuff like that. In fact, now that I think about it, what about lab quests? Those low-level learning, those learning uh, dungeons. Um, I think it was the one with a bunch of fairies. Um, one of their abilities is soothe and paralysis. Soothe meaning uh, you can't do your normal normal abilities. All you can do is pacification. I think that's what it was called. Uh, pacification, um, sleep, but, um, it was supposed to, it's, it's the kind of run that's supposed to teach healers how to dispel the buffs. Not everybody does it. So, but again, this might be also one of the reasons why I'm only going one group at a time. Uh, I mean, I've run that, I've run this left, is that a left quest? No. What the hell is it called? It was like one of those... It was like one of those early, those beginner dungeons. I, the name totally escapes me, but it's one of those. It's a, it's a learning dungeon. It has fairies. It's designed to teach uh, healers how to dispel the buffs. But not all healers do it. Do it. And again, having tanked, having tanked this particular one numerous times, uh, I will only go one at a time. I'm not gonna pull. I'm not going boss to boss. You know, I don't. I if, I if I don't trust that healer, I'm not doing it. Now, 
if the buffs are falling off me the very moment they're coming on, then yeah, I'll go ahead and I'll go boss to boss because I can trust the healer now. But again, if they don't, I'm going one at a time. But again, going back to what I said a few moments ago, I don't pull one at a time just to piss you off. I do it, I do it for a good reason. So now, as far as this goes, you will die. No one will heal you, and the tank is not going to follow you. I don't. Now, I don't. I think her. Like a lot of other people, like a lot of other people that have had, that have gone through this, they tend to over-exaggerate this. I mean, yes. Yes, you pull from the tank, tank can't handle it, he dies, and a wipe occurs. It happens in this game, but not that often. Again, most most of the people, they so grossly, this is especially true in end gear content. You know, people so grossly out-gear the con, so grossly out-gear the stuff, that it, mechanics? What mechanics? You know, it, it doesn't happen that often. I mean, it, and this is especially true in World of Warcraft, in the end game dungeons in there. People, everybody pulls for everybody all the time. It's like roles don't even exist. Why? Because everybody so grossly elk gears the shit that they can get away with it. And it's also one of my biggest complaints about this game here, FF14. The, it's great to have a level sync, but, or let me, it has a level sync, it has an eye level sync. But the problem is, is it's too generous. It, they need to clamp down on it, so kind of the way it works in a, in regular level sync. The, um, your, your eye level is synced just a wee bit higher than the content itself. But again, it's way too generous in this game. So... But because it isn't, because it isn't, you're not going to see this happen that often. You are going to see it, but it isn't going to be as exact. It isn't going to be as everybody else says. They're exaggerating it. So, yes, yes. And like I said a few minutes ago. World of Warcraft has been out since 2004 or 2005, so it's been out there for about seven years before this game came into existence. So, there's a whole lot of jadedness in that game. No. Oh, fuck it, I'll just pull for the tank anyway. If we wipe, oh well. I'll probably never see him again anyway. You know, that, that kind of thinking. Gung Ho, Archer, Lancer, Run Ahead. No. Again, I don't see. I've seen. I've seen this happen in this game, but not as often as. Not as often as people make it out to be. Never asked for a recommend. <laughs> this I've never seen, but. This heart. This totally reminds me of all the shit I have to see on YouTube. Nearly every channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more great content. I hate that. And in fact, one of my favorite YouTubers, Emperor Lemon, he says this, he, he made the same complaint that I did. I mean, who, who the fuck in the right mind is gonna go on a channel? Wow, I like this guy's content. Sure wish I knew of a way to, sure wish I knew of a way to watch more of it. Oh my God. Or he, he does his like, his, his, does it in his own inimitable Emperor, Emperor Lemon style. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Oh yeah, I can subscribe. So I mean, I've never seen that. Not to mention, you know, if people, I think, if people like you enough, they're gonna stick with you through thick and thin, no matter what. So saying like and subscribe is is redundant. It's a waste of effort. You know. If anything, you know, or at least in my mind, to me, people, and especially in this day and age with Twitter, social media, etc., if you've got to, if you still have to say, please like and subscribe, saying like, please like and subscribe is not going to help you. If anything, people are probably going to be turned off by, uh, turned off on your channel. I know I am. I mean, but you, 
Otherwise, you gotta be a... You better be a great channel. For me to... Great, for me to keep coming back. Um... Justin Wong comes to mind. The guy's a legendary, uh... He's a legendary fighting gamer. Uh... Punk. Another legendary fighting gamer. I mean... They all... I mean, they all got to... Like and subscribe! You know, but... I mean, their... Their channels are great enough to where I'll still keep coming back. But... Uh, not that I think about it. Well, 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 let me take that back. Um, they might also be required to say that because they're all they're members of uh, Panda Global. That's probably it was probably written into their contract or whatever that they have to say like and subscribe. So, so I'll give them a pass on that. But anyway, you get the idea here. Um, I think I'm kind of rambling on too long. So, but yeah, it, I've never had this happen. But if it's anything like um the uh. Please, like and subscribe. That I always hear on the damn YouTube channels, then yeah, I wouldn't like this either. Uh, assuming they know what this is. Uh, for those that don't know, arm's length. It's an ability that, uh, it keeps you, it, um, it works as kind of a, how can I put it? If you've ever played Guild Wars 2, it's kind of like the stability buff. It basically, in this game, as it pertains to this game, it um it keeps you from being uh, knocked back. It also keeps you from being pulled in. Um, bloodbath. For uh for some odd seconds, all attacks you do will heal you by a percentage. But again, this also assumes that uh tanks that uh that these players are that these players know about these abilities and they're actually using them again coming from a healer perspective i've seen tanks you know go boss to boss but don't do any kind of defensive cooldowns whatsoever so but again this also assumes that the people you're running with know what they're doing and if I have reason to think that they don't, I'm not going ham. I mean, I'm only going one at a time. Healers putting regen on the tank before a pull. To be fair, I've been I've been guilty of this before. Um, but yeah, it. But yeah, there's been times where uh. Yeah, where uh, I'll be a tank. Somebody puts a. It, I think a lot of these healers. Oh god, they're I want to say they're too good. Like they're they're really trying to optimize their their skill for lack of a better phrase. They're they're trying to put uh, they're trying to put regen on me um just after I've engaged the monsters. I think that's the correct the correct timing for it. Yeah, you don't You don't put regen on a tank before the pull, but some of them some of them are trying to time it so, again, so they're putting regen on me the very instant I engage, I engage the monsters but sometimes I might have fucked up somewhere and pushed the wrong button or, you know, stuff like that, and I, I won't be able to get aggro on the monsters for whatever reason regen comes on before I can actually do this regen kicks in monsters run away from me I have to go back and try to gather them all up. So, so yeah, healers, if you're, so, so all you healers, you want to regen me, wait a few moments, you know. Again, I'm not engaging them immediately to piss you off. I probably messed up somewhere, you know. I pushed the wrong button, you know, that kind of thing. You, you, you kind of get what I mean. But, yeah, it, but, yeah, I just said this a few moments ago, but, yeah, this, this makes a real mess right here when this happens. In fact, I'll go ahead and like it. And let me do a screen check. You have a point for AR, don't you? Um, no, this has 
doesn't really have anything to do with what she's talking about. Possibly. I'm I kind of understand what he's talking about, but I don't know. Maybe they're AFK. Maybe they got DC'd. Maybe their fart wasn't a fart at all and they had to kind of make a bathroom run. I mean, who knows? I guess I guess I could have highlighted this as well, but it this so. Oh. Probably have to rewind back to the start of this video. There's probably a reason I'm not doing it. Uh, nope. And for anybody that's wondering why, uh, why tanks get the insta -cues and why, um, uh, there's not many tanks out there, this is one of the biggest reasons why. That's not an, it's not a nice way of telling them to pull more. You know what? You know what a nice way of telling them to pull more would be? Telling them to pull more. Especially if you can be diplomatic or if you can be constructive about it. Like, no, you don't just type down, pull more, noob. No, you say, hey, look, feel free to pull more. I've been playing, you know, feel free to pull more. We out gear this content. Me and Billy, me and my friend Billy Bob have been running this ever since ever since Alpha. You know, something like that. You know, actually, you know, type down some words of encouragement to get the tank going. Again, as I said towards the start of my video, if somebody pulled this shit, if somebody tried pulling this shit with me at the end of the encounter, I'm gone. And I'm sure there's a lot of other tanks that are like this too. Again, it's a respect issue. It's not a poor efficiency issue or anything like that. Oh, yes. Red Mage, due to reviving a tank, healer only to walk away with zero comment. Been there. Been there. Yup. Been there. I mean, I've, I've done my fair share of Red Mage and two. No, I'm not. Um, if I'm reading this right, unlike Theo, unlike Theo here, I don't expect it. I mean, just like a waitress or whatever. I mean, a tip would be nice, but I definitely don't expect it. But uh, part of that too, I mean, part of that too, again, I don't know the people I'm running with. So for, uh, I mean, they might, I mean, they might just be total, un, you know, ungrateful assholes. But on the other hand, they might be fairly new too. They may not, you know, they, you know, they might have, uh, they might just be laying there on the floor dead, uh, just twiddling their thumbs and then all of a sudden, poof, they're revived and have no idea why. I've been up. I mean, I've had that happen too. I mean, including, you know, I mean, I was new once myself. I mean, there's probably been times where I'll be doing whatever and all of a sudden, whoa, where did that come from? What did that, what happened? What happened? And not having a clue. You know, me, or, you know, maybe like what this guy was talking about. You know, maybe I died, but then all of a sudden, unexpectedly, whoa, hey, I'm alive again. Hey, what happened? Uh, you know, and, and not having a clue as to why. I don't know who to give the commendation to. I would love to. I mean, if I knew, if I knew the cause of it, I mean, I, these days, I mean, I'm probably somewhere before my FF14 hiatus, I probably would have if we were all, you know, if, if I was laying there dead and all of a sudden I got revived, the, the comm's definitely going, if there's a red mage in the group, yeah, he's getting the comm. I mean, if I'm seeing people dropping dead, but then reviving back up and there's a red mage in the group, yeah, I'm giving him the comm now. Because I know why it happened. But I mean, again. Again, I don't know who I'm running with. They might be newbies. They may not have a clue as to what happened. They might, so. But anyway, you, can't, you, guys get, you guys get what I'm saying with this, so let me move along.
<laughs> Done this. Um, White Mage. Uh, my first time ever playing one. Or I should say, I was uh, new to White Mage. Yeah. I was new to White Mage, so I had no idea how the, how the buttons work or anything. So, yeah, I kept reaching at everybody. So... Most dungeons are a straight line, and World of Warcraft was like this too. Oh, I really, I really wish I knew the name of the vanilla dungeon in WoW. God, but yeah, it was a it's a dwarven dungeon that had a shit ton of different paths you could take. Um, it was one big huge, I want to say hub dungeon, but um, it was one massive dungeon that was separated into new, several different branches. But uh, it was a bunch... I want to say Iron Forge something. But it was a whole bunch of different... It was one big dungeon separated into a whole bunch of different other dungeons. And you could have... You can pick... You can pick which one of those... Uh, one of those branches you wanted to do. And it wasn't unique to just this particular dwarf dungeon. There was a... Uh, there was like a... A nature or a forest-based dungeon that was like this too. It was like three or four different. It was like a big dungeon, separated into like four different uh, branches. And um, on your dungeon finder, you kind of pick and choose which one of them you want them to run. More, uh, more games need that. But yeah, just like he said though, dungeons these days are just a straight line from point A to point B. Ninja main. Yep. <laughs> How did I guess? <laughs> yep. Doton. For those that don't know, it lays down a it lays down an AOE on the ground. But I mean, to be fair, I've done this too. But again, most mostly out of ignorance. Again, I don't do what I do to piss you off. Told you, you're gonna be hearing this. You're gonna be hearing me say this a lot. But I don't do this to piss you off. I do it because I don't know how. The uh, whatever it is you have on the ground works, you know, or, or I might have my own reasons to, uh, cause I want to pull them over here or something. But you know, again, I don't do it because I'm trying to make you mad. But yeah, as uh, I think my favorite uh, my favorite DPSer, I think my favorite DPSer in this game is the Ninja, and I believe my I believe my share of Dotons down, and yeah, I've seen that happen too. Lay it down right right underneath a huge group of monsters. All of a sudden, boop, they get moved out. So, been there. Yep, again, just like I said a little while ago with World of Warcraft, especially vanilla, a lot of monsters and a lot of monsters in those, dun those dungeons, they can disarm you, they can stun you, they can blind you, confuse you, fear you, etc., etc. But you don't really see that kind of thing these days. The most you see these days, uh, stuff like paralysis. I want to paralysis and uh, blind is another one. Like your your attacks have a twenty percent chance of missing. Yeah. Yep. Um, as a tank myself, I'm usually too busy tanking to really pay attention to what the rest of the group is doing. If I, if I get an inkling that the battle's taking longer than normal, or longer than it usually does, I might, I might start looking at, I might start looking at the other players, but again, for the most part, the the dungeon runs the the dungeons that I tank, they go pretty smooth. Stuff dies in a reasonable amount of time. I don't really, when when that when that happens, I don't really care who does what. So 
And um, as the uh, album here is pretty much over, I'll probably just go ahead and close it out here on this first page. Like I said, after this first page, it pretty much just becomes an echo chamber. Everybody's just going to be basically echo what was repeated on the earlier posts. So, but um, as it, but as a healer though, if uh, if I don't DPS, that's because that's probably because I'm paranoid, or if somebody's taking you know big spikes of damage, um, if I'm having a really struggle to keep somebody up then yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna stand there. Again, you know, I don't do this to piss you off. I'm doing this because, you know, I can't trust somebody in the group. You know, if somebody is, if somebody's health is boom, constantly dropping, healing back up, boom, healing them back up, boom. you know, if, if I'm having to go through this a lot, then no, I'm not DPS because I'm just gonna stand there and wait. So, you know, you, know, you the tank, you might be pulling big and not using your defensive cooldowns, or you just might not know what you're doing. Somebody else might not know what they're doing, etc. So, if, if me, the healer, is not DPSing, there's a reason. So. Ten percent of their HP per huddle. And also, again, me, like some other healers that you takes might be running with, we might be new. I mean... At least, at least with me, if I'm learning a healer, I am te I tend to be a, a stay-at-home healer. If I'm if I'm trying to learn my I'm trying to learn if I'm trying to learn in my class my healing class, I'm more likely to stay at home than I am to take risks and start DPSing. It's not going to be until I'm actually uncomfortable, or it's not going to be until I'm comfortable with healing, you know, knowing the timing of it all and knowing getting you know knowing the rhythm of the role knowing the rhythm of the runs, you know, that kind of thing, you know, trying to get a feel for the group. When I'm comfortable with that, then I'll start DPSing. So I think she's kind of alluding to that here too, so. 10%. Yeah, okay, I, okay. Again, chances are too, either one, they might be paranoid. You, you know, you just... You know, you might be running with somebody with paranoia issues. Two, they might be new, like me. They might be inexperienced. So again, again, at least, at least in my mind, if I'm trying to learn how to heal, I'm going to stay at home. I mean, I'm heal first, DPS later. It's not going to be until I'm comfortable with healing, and you know, if I'm comfortable with the flow of how everything is going. Then yeah, I'll start DPSing. But until then. I'm staying back, and I'm just gonna focus on healing. So, but otherwise, yeah, I do, I do get what she's saying. You know, I, I, and there is no way, in, no way in hell. I mean, if this is all the tanks going through, I can't sit still. I mean, if I'm in a run, if I can DPS, I'm doing it. You know what I mean? I mean, I got, I mean, I got to be pushing buttons. You know, so I got to keep busy. So. And on a related yet unrelated note, this is probably one of the, this is probably one of the re, one of the upsides of doing the job that I do, manual labor and heavy lifting at Walmart. It's you're always busy, at least in and of itself, the job itself. I love it. You know, it's physical, and there's you know, and you're you're busy. You know, there's technically there's a deadline we have to meet. You know, there's but um, it it gets to wear off. Crazy as that might sound, you know, I do get it, you know, there's, at least with me, there's pride. You know, I like, you know, I kind of take pride in what I do. You know, to me, that it's it's perfectly okay to have that. Even the shittiest jobs you can think of, it, in my mind at least, it's perfectly all right to, be, to take pride in what you do. That's how I am at Walmart. So, you know, and again, the job itself, you're busy or, you know, you're, you got to get this done. You got to get that done. You got to get the other done, etc. That that translates over to, into into gaming as well. I can't just stand there. Uh, eh, tank don't need to be healed. So I, I I I can't do that. I gotta I gotta I gotta keep busy doing something. So I mean, and yes, I I've, I've had I've had jobs, mostly union jobs, where. 
where um I've actually been I've actually been criticized for going too fast. Yes, it is possible. You can't you can't I mean you can't get a you can't get in trouble for being too efficient. I, I apparently there's some kind of union regulations in there that if you go if you go too fast it actually counts against you like you're trying too hard. I don't know what the specific union rule is, but every union job I've worked at that's that that's what happens. One thing comes to mind. Um, one job I used to have, uh, detailing cars at a at a Ford dealership. It was a union job. Um, coming in early, staying late, is completely pointless. P- um, punching a time clock, technically you still have to do it just for all, for, for logistical reasons, just to prove that you're actually there. But automatically, the the company clocks you in at 8 a or 8 a, or, 8 a, or I'm just going to say 8 a.m. and then automatically clocks you out at 5 p.m. Yeah, no matter how late you stay, how late you stay, you will automatically be clocked out at 5 p.m. and you do not get overtime. There's no overtime. So, in, in, a, in a situation like that, you trying to do your job as a, it, they don't act, they don't explicitly say it, but um, efficiency is basically frowned upon. You know, efficiency is a waste of time. Is par- you know, paradoxically, efficiency is a waste of time. Because again, you're automatically clocked in at 8 a.m. No matter how early you come in, you're automatically clocked out at 5 p.m. No matter how late you stay. So, so I, I'm kind of, I'm kind of going off on a tangent here. But yeah, like I said, it. She kind of struck a nerve here. As long as they have regen rolling off, a lot of healers seem to get a. But yeah, again, me, I. If there's anything I can do to, if there's anything I can do to contribute in some way, then yeah, I'm I'm doing it. But I mean. But if, yeah, if I saw. If I saw a healer. If I saw a healer doing just standing around, like doing nothing. Um. Yeah, the first thing I'm probably gonna do is inspect her gear. If if she's in like. If she's like grossly undergeared, you know, if, if she's basically wearing a cloud suit, totally geared, you know, and, you know, totally geared not correctly, that kind of thing, then yeah, I'll go ahead and let it slide. You know, you know, but if I see a, you know, but if I see a healer that is way over geared for the content we're running and he's just standing around doing nothing, then yeah, I'm, then yeah, I'm calling, you know, I'm going to ask her, hey, what's going on, you know, that kind of thing. But, but now that it, I can't, I can't really recall a single time where that's happened, though. Like, like a like a healer, a healer in full raid gear, just standing around doing nothing. I, I can't think of a time where that's happened. Usually, if a healer's geared like that, if she's healing, she's DPSing as well. So, but anyway, um, I'm gonna go ahead and close it out here. So I've said all the things I wanted to say. Um, but otherwise, hey, thanks for um. Thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate that. And um, and see you all next time. Take care.